When I was pregnant with my first child, I worked the overnight shift at a gas station near my house to pick up some extra hours. I know this may not sound amazing, but this gas station was beautiful. It was one of those full market gas stations, and it was in a really nice section of town. I know most stories that take place in these 24-hour settings are usually in dark and eerie places, but I never once felt that way in this company. Usually after 11 o'clock at night, it was slow. I would spend most of my shift watching YouTube or Netflix on my phone, talking to my fiancé or stocking the shelves. I didn't even get that many overnight truck drivers buying coffee or snacks because the gas station wasn't that close to any highways. It was an easy job, especially being pregnant, and it paid well which was the main reason behind this job. One night early in my shift, a taller man came in. I shouted from behind the counter, Hey there, how you doing this evening? The man didn't respond. He didn't even look in my direction. He walked straight into the bathroom. That wasn't that alarming to me though if I'm being honest. I knew better than most at this point that when you gotta go, you gotta go. So I just figured that he just really had to go to the bathroom. After nearly 20 minutes, I noticed he had never come out of the bathroom. I was a little concerned and was thinking about knocking on the door to make sure he was alright. I slowly started making my way to the bathroom and saw that he had finally come out. I got a good look at his face at this point. He was as normal looking as can be. He was clean shaven with a tan complexion. He had short grey hair that was parted and combed nicely. Even though his hair was grey, he couldn't have been older than 40 years old. He was wearing jeans, a flannel, and work boots that looked really beat up. I got the impression that this guy was just some blue-collar worker and he was just stopping to use the restroom. He walked right by me again and didn't say a word. He walked outside but didn't get in any vehicle. He looked like he walked to the side of the building. That's when I noticed that there was no vehicle out there. So whoever the strange man was, he must have walked. That whole ordeal was a little off-putting, but overall I stopped thinking about it just a couple of minutes later since it was uneventful. Part of working these late night shifts is you get your array of strange individuals. As the night continued, I ended up calling my fiancé and we were just talking on the phone passing the time. It had to be at least an hour later. The door opened and to my surprise, it was the same guy. This time I didn't say anything to him, figuring that maybe he spoke another language or something. Well, that theory went out the window instantly because instead of walking to the bathroom, this time he walked right up to the counter and asked in a polite voice, Hello ma'am, you can't say hello to me? He smiled as he said it, indicating me that he was joking around. I nervously smiled and responded, Sorry about that sir, hello, how are, how are you doing this evening? He smiled and only responded with one word in an abrupt tone, Jerky. I jumped back a little bit and said, Excuse me? The man then leaned toward me and in a polite voice changed into a more aggressive voice and he said, I want beef jerky. Where is it? I pointed over to the rack where all the jerky and Slim Jims were located. He smiled at me and now in a polite tone once again he said, Why thank you ma'am. He slowly walked over to the beef jerky and stopped once he got to the rack. He was standing completely still when he said to me, You know... You look just like a Disney princess. I was a bit creeped out, but said thank you anyway, just figuring that he was trying to be nice. I look like a lot of things, but one thing I do not look like is a Disney princess, trust me. Without grabbing any jerky, he marched back over to the counter and started to stare at me. I know staring on its own is harmless, but this stare felt intrusive and made me uncomfortable. His eyes were flying around like ping pong balls and he said, yeah, that's it. Disney princess. I can see it now. I gave a little half smirk and apparently that wasn't good enough for this man. He started to shout and I mean quite literally started to scream. What? You don't like Disney? I didn't even have time to respond before he started to shout again. My daughter used to like Disney and now she's just like you. I started to gather that clearly this man wasn't right. I had no idea what that statement was even supposed to mean. His daughter is just like me. As calmly as I could, I said, I I'm sorry if I offended you, I'm just... I he cut me off and started to scream uncontrollably. At this point, he wasn't saying anything that made any sense at all. It was just a lot of gibberish and nonsense, saying things like, Instead of a princess, you all want to be the heroes. 
and even more strangely, I could be a king, and instead, I'm here. It was clear to me that this man was having some sort of nervous breakdown. Thankfully, I never hung up the phone with my fiancé who was witnessing this entire unhinged conversation. He felt like something was clearly not right and he didn't want to take any chances, so he called the police and told them what I was dealing with, an unruly and potentially hostile customer. Well, I have never been more thankful for my fiancé because during the man's rant, he did start becoming hostile. He stormed back over to the beef jerky and knocked over the entire display. Even though this guy was clearly not right, this was the first moment that I actually felt unsafe. After knocking over the display, he turned and looked at me and his eyes were almost indescribable. They looked void of any emotion. At that moment, two cop cars pulled up and the man didn't even flinch. He didn't move. He just stood over by the rack and continued to stare at me. The cops walked inside and to their credit they didn't overreact and remained cool and calm. One of the police officers came to me and made sure that I was alright, which I was. The other officer went over to the man and was talking to him quietly. I couldn't make out any of the words the cop was saying to the man. The man looked upset but didn't lose his temper as he did moments ago, and the officers escorted him out, not in handcuffs or anything like that. They literally just walked outside and had a conversation that lasted a good 20 minutes. One officer left with the man, with the other hanging around at the gas station with me and just making sure the man didn't come back. I have no idea what would have happened if my fiancé wasn't still on the phone and called the police. The man was becoming more and more enraged with every moment. I never saw the guy again, and I never placed any official report, really. After this night, I didn't work another overnight shift. I know some people may have had far worse and more terrifying stories of working overnight and... I feel for those people, however, this was the worst thing that's ever happened to me personally and even though I left with no physical harm, the fear that I felt that evening just looking at that crazed man is something that will always be burned into my brain. I was a night shift clerk at a 24 hour gas station back in the late 90s, before they had credit card readers on every pump. I had been doing it for two years already and it was a good job since I went to college during the day. It was tiresome but it paid bills and gave me some spending cash for beer and things like that. The gas station I worked at was on the edge of town, so we got very little traffic late at night, but truckers came through often enough to make it worthwhile to stay open. This suited me well because I would spend all my downtime studying until the next shift came in at 2am. This was probably the only really crazy thing that happened to me while working there, so I remember it well. It was late fall, Friday night I think, and things had been real quiet that night. I'd say that normally we'd get four or five people through every hour or so. But this night, it was an hour until the end of my shift, and I had only seen a trucker and one other late night motorist. As I was saying, it was about one o'clock and all was silent. I was nodding off over my textbooks, organic chemistry or something like that, when the chime sounded alerting me that someone had walked in. The man looked pretty raggedy. He had a long wool coat on, a beanie, and a salt and pepper beard reached down to his chin. I could tell from 20 feet away that his eyes were bloodshot. They were so red, and the heavy smell of marijuana and booze filled the store as soon as he entered. Like I said before, the store is at the edge of town. I had never had anyone walk in that late at night since it was about 10 miles from any residential area. He staggered up and down each aisle looking at various products and then putting them back down. I wasn't really nervous honestly because he wasn't a very imposing figure, short and really skinny. If anything I would have expected him to try and grab some food and make a run for it. Once he started to make his way back through the aisles a second time, I asked if he needed some help. He kind of grunted and just kept doing what he was doing. I thought maybe he was just trying to warm up before moving on again and let him be. I went back to reading my book and not even a few minutes later, he was at the checkout stand. It scared me a little because I never heard him walk up to me. He was suddenly there and slurred out, You got any cigarettes? Now there was a whole wall of cigarettes behind me, so I asked him what type. He said, No, no, 
I mean, do you have any on you? I told him I didn't smoke, but if he wanted to purchase some, I could do that for him. This next thing I'll never forget. His face went blank, and I could tell he was staring at something behind me, so I turned to see what he was looking at. There was nothing there except the wall and all the cigarettes we had on display. I turned back around and he let out a blood-curdling scream, pointed at something and a look of absolute shock was plastered on his face. You know that scene from Invasion of the Body Snatchers? It's an older film and I'm thinking of the one from 1978, where at the end Donald Sutherland has been turned into a pod person and he's pointing and screaming. I've seen it come back in memes sometimes. Anyways, it kind of reminded me of that, but he looked even more terrified. He then reached over the counter and grabbed me by my shirt, pulling me to him real close and screamed, They're here! They're here! Before pushing me back and running out the door. That scared the shit out of me, and I was hoping it was the last I would see of him. But a minute or two later, he was out in front pacing back and forth, yelling at nothing and occasionally hitting himself in the head with a closed fist. I didn't know what else to do, so I locked the door quickly and watched him for a moment. When it became apparent he wasn't going to leave, I called the cops and let them know he was being a nuisance. They said they would send someone over to pick him up. I couldn't risk him doing something to a customer if one happened to come by, or a customer doing something to this poor man that clearly was not mentally well. From the time I called the cops until they showed up was only about 15 minutes, but in that time a 90-something Honda Accord pulled up. At first I worried a customer would be bothered, but then I saw a man, probably in his late 20s. It was hard to tell with the lights washing him out, and he started to talk to the mentally ill man. Then I saw the younger man lead the other one to his car. Before I could unlock the door and make it out of there, they were gone. The police later showed up and I gave a description of everything that happened and of the car and the younger man as best I could. I don't know whatever happened to the mentally ill man or the younger one. I sometimes think that maybe the younger one was the son, friend, or relative of the ill one and he was taking him somewhere safe. But it could have been something more sinister. About a year ago, in my final semester in college, I worked at a Shaw's grocery store in Boston, Massachusetts. For those of you who don't know what Shaw's is, it's basically a grocery store that's mainly based in the Northeast. I didn't have a car yet, so I mainly requested for day shifts as I've always been skeptical of the night. It wasn't that I hated them. It was more so the fear of what could happen, especially to a petite five foot seven girl like me. However, sometimes I'd be given a closing shift, much to my annoyance, as I had a 7.45 AM class and we closed pretty late. Whenever I did have a closing shift, we'd end up closing at 10 and it's about an hour's bus ride back home. My managers, being the jerks that they were, gave me a week of closing shifts knowing my situation. I was pissed, but whatever. It's a few hundred dollars added to my paycheck, so I couldn't argue with that. It was a Thursday night, and I had just finished stocking a few chips as we had just gotten an extra shipment. It was me, my manager, and another coworker running the register. It's about an hour before we close, and the store is pretty much dead except for a few customers. I finish putting the chips on the shelves and get ready to clock out. Before doing so, my manager had told me to go outside and bring the shopping carts that were in the parking lot to the store. Living in a decent sized city, it wasn't uncommon for careless people to leave their carts out in the open. As I'm grabbing a cart beside a car, a woman rolls down her window and says hello. With a friendly smile, I say hello back and asked if I could help her. In the car was a mom and what appeared to be her teenage daughter in the front seat. Right away, the mom seemed concerned, looking back and forth before telling me that they needed gas. 
I tell her there was a gas station just down the road, but she then interrupts me, asking if I could give her money for gas. She's explaining as to how she just came from another state and was in desperate need. Being a dirt poor college student, I barely made enough to pay for my own tuition. However, I didn't want to decline help to someone in need, so I take out my wallet and hand her a $5 bill. She stares down at the money and then back at me as if she wanted more when she said that it wasn't enough. I told her I was sorry and that was all I had. She then says in a more direct tone, if I could get into her car and go down to the gas station to help her get gas. As I was about to respond, that's when I noticed the teenage daughter had been staring at me the whole time. She's sitting in the seat, giving me this dead stare while licking her lips as if she were planning on something. That was my cue to get out of there as something wasn't right. Thankfully, my manager had come out and when he saw the car, it immediately pulled out of the parking lot and drove off. I remember running up to him and thanking him for noticing. He also knew something was wrong as he could definitely see the fear and panic of my face. My manager took a picture of the car and was able to identify the year and model of it. I worked at that Shaw's for a good year after that and never saw that car again. Anybody who has ever worked at a fast food restaurant overnight knows just how unique some patrons can be. To add another variable to this already great combination, I worked at a 24-hour McDonald's that was directly off an exit, so it was a frequent stop for truckers, cops, drunks, and anybody looking to get hot food in the middle of the night. As you would expect, I met countless characters that I could describe. I could write a book about every strange and unique human I met while working at that job. I've even had some wild experiences with people who decided to have an all-out brawl right in the middle of the restaurant, but none of these experiences were scary, just crazy to witness, I guess. Only once in the two years that I worked at the restaurant did I experience something that really indeed horrified me. That night started like most nights that I did the overnight shift. I got there at 10, and it was extremely slow. It was always really slow at that time, and then you would get a rush from about 11.30pm to 1.30am, and then depending on the day, it would be sporadic throughout the night. On this night, I was hoping for a slow night. It was just one of those days when I was not feeling it at all. My car wouldn't start in the morning, and my husband tried to figure it out, but unfortunately, cars aren't his strong suit, so I was without a car. On top of that, I felt so under the weather. It happens to me every fall season. I felt like a house fell on me and I just wanted to get under a blanket and pass out, but unfortunately, I got bills to pay, so unless I was extremely sick, calling in was not an option. Thankfully, I was able to take my husband's Silverado truck to work. A little after 2am, my coworker and I were just hanging out. I ended up getting my wish with it being slow. That night was one of the slowest nights I could remember working. Eventually, my coworker went into the office to do some paperwork. I think that was an excuse to go take a nap or something, but I didn't have the energy to call him out. When I was alone at the counter, listening to YouTube on my phone, I heard the bell from the door. It was a peculiar looking man. He wasn't an old man, but he wasn't young either, maybe mid-forties if I had to guess. He looked homeless, but not grungy and dirty, more like he was just not put together right. He was shorter than me, but I'm tall for a woman. He couldn't have weighed more than 130 pounds even with his big winter coat on. As he slowly approached the counter, I asked, Hey there, sir. What can I get you tonight? The man just looked at me and smiled. I wish I could have a picture of that moment. The look that he was giving me made me so unsettled. Something about the way he looked at me was just not right, and it gave me the creeps before he even spoke. His eyes were so dark that they looked almost black, and his mouth was just open enough with his smile that I could see his yellow teeth. Finally... He spoke after what seemed like an outrageous amount of time and I was surprised at the deep southern voice that came out of this little man and he said, Wow, aren't you gorgeous? I thought I wanted fries, but maybe I'll order something else. Yeah, 
So I know that's weird and creepy, but working this graveyard shift at a restaurant that gets a lot of customers who are under the influence, I'm used to weird attempts at flirting. So I just smiled and said very politely, Okay, sir, well, when you know what you want, just let me know. The man now grinned from ear to ear, flashing his full set of yellow and gray teeth. He set his hands on the counter, and all I could see were his long and dirty fingernails. Trying not to look visibly disgusted, he spoke up again and said, Forget the fries. What time are you done? Usually something like this, I would just smile and say I'm married and move on with my life, but I don't know if it was because I didn't feel good or maybe because the guy gave me the creeps from the start, but instead, in an annoyed and aggressive voice, I responded with, If you don't want to order any food, you can leave. The man started to laugh as if though I told him a great joke. Before I said or did something that I would regret, I turned around and started knocking on the office door. When my coworker opened the door, he could tell that I was visibly shaken. I told him about the creepy guy who was clearly in sight, and he smirked because he knew right away what I was dealing with. He told me to go take a break and that he would take care of the guy. Without even thinking or looking back, I grabbed my coat and went outside, sat in my husband's truck for 15 minutes and just listened to music. I had almost forgotten about that creep up until right before I went back inside. I noticed him wandering on the far side of the parking lot with a to-go bag in his hands. I was relieved that my coworker was able to get rid of him and I decided to wait in the truck for another five minutes just in case. I didn't want this creep to see what vehicle mine was. When I finally got back inside, my coworker looked a little freaked out. I asked him about the interaction with that freak and his answer just really freaked me out. He said in a tentative voice, I don't know if I should tell you. I started to jokingly hit his arm and I told him to tell me, to which he complied and he said, That guy was crazy. When I came out to take his order, he just kept asking where the girl was. So I told him that you went home for the night and he started to lose his mind, screaming and swearing. I ended up just giving him a free medium fry just to shut him up and get him out of here. Then he turned around and as he was walking out, he said, Tell Monica I said goodbye and I'll see her soon. This little story almost made me faint, mainly because I don't wear a name tag at this job. I had no earthly idea how this man knew my name. For the remainder of the shift, I couldn't focus. I just kept looking over at the door expecting this man to stumble back in, but thankfully, he never did. Close to 4.30 in the morning, I asked if I could leave early. He knew that I wasn't feeling well, and with the creepy guy on my mind, he knew that I just needed to get away. Just to make my night more enjoyable, as I was leaving it started to snow, and it was the first truly hard snowfall of the season, even though fall basically just started. I was thankful to have my husband's truck once again, and I figured if I just took it slow I'd be safe. I couldn't have been more wrong. Only about a half mile from work I ended up driving into a ditch because I couldn't see the road from the snow falling. I was alright and it didn't seem like too much damage, but I couldn't get myself out of the ditch. I called police and surprisingly the cops were there in about a minute. I got out of the truck to greet the cop and that's when it happened. From the bed of the truck, the man from the restaurant jumped out and started to run full speed into the night. I screamed and then was at a loss for words. The cop didn't know what to do and started to yell at me to tell him what was going on. I finally told him and he radioed some other cops, but they never caught him. We eventually went back to the restaurant and I gave the police my entire story. They looked at the cameras, but it wasn't enough to ever actually catch the guy. The worst part was watching the video of the guy getting into the bed of the truck. It was no more than 10 minutes after my break. He came storming back into the parking lot with the food bag still in his hands. He looked around for a few minutes, tried the door, and when it was locked, he just jumped into the back. I'm so lucky I drove into a ditch that night because if I hadn't, who knows what would have happened to me. The bag was left in the back of the truck with the fries still in it. This guy never even wanted the food. He knew my name from the start and he knew when I worked and he knew the vehicle that I would have. This happened several years ago and I'm still not quite ready to work overnights again. Always lock your doors and please be careful. Some people really are monsters.
This happened in 2004. I was a new college graduate starting my career in healthcare at a hospital two hours away from where I grew up. The hospital I worked at was huge. A level one trauma center. I work in a highly specialized area. There were only two other people at the hospital with my licensure. That's important because we spent a lot of time working alone in our department and had to stagger our shifts for coverage. I had the early shift. I arrived at 5.45 in the morning. Staff parking was several city blocks away from the hospital and they sent a shuttle to pick employees up. The lot was surrounded by an urban forest. The city tried to leave as much green space and trees as possible. There was nothing else near the parking lot at the time. Since I arrived so early, the shuttle service had to be called when I arrived. The call button was located at the shuttle stop, meaning you had to leave your car to communicate with the dispatch. I was always creeped out because, even though there were parked cars, there were never any employees in the lot at the time I came in. The overnight shift didn't change until 7 a.m. A few weeks after I started working there, I had settled into the shuttle routine and gotten more comfortable. At this time, cell phone service was spotty at best, and I didn't own a smartphone, so it wasn't very reliable. One afternoon, when I returned to my car, I found a note left on my windshield. It read, Hot and sweet you are. I glanced around and didn't see anyone. I was perplexed, but not really frightened. Another week passed. I forgot about the note. Until one afternoon I returned to my car and found a flower in the windshield wiper and another note. This one read, I really love your dimples. I could make you smile. What the heck? I had just moved to this town and didn't have any friends beyond the other two people in my department. I didn't know anyone else. I did feel creeped out this time and began feeling like I was being watched or something. Early in the mornings, I would park as close to the shuttle stop as possible, buzz the dispatch, and then wait in my car with the doors locked. I often imagined I heard shuffling noises like shoes scraping through the gravel, and I couldn't see all the way to the dark corners of the lot. When I returned to my car in the afternoons, I carried my pepper spray just in case. I told my coworkers about the notes, and they told me I should tell security. I felt a little silly, but I made a report. Security said they would keep an eye out, whatever that meant. I stopped parking in that lot, opting instead to find parking on the street nearer to the hospital where there were other people around. Things went fine for the next few weeks, until one day I got another note. This time, it was on my car one morning, outside my apartment building. In the same scribbly handwriting, it simply read, Don't be shy. I was so confused. What did this person want? Obviously they were following me and now they knew where I lived and probably knew I lived alone. I contacted the police. There wasn't much they could do, but they did make some safety recommendations and said they would patrol the neighborhood more often. I took a self-defense class and was hyper aware of my surroundings. It was worse not knowing who I was dealing with. A few weeks later, a woman was found assaulted and murdered in the trees behind the employee parking lot. They caught the guy a couple days later. I recognized him. He was a contract painter who had been working in my area. The hospital had been remodeling our department, and this painter would come in early, around 6.30 a.m. I made coffee every morning in the break room, and he would come in to get a cup. We made small talk a few times, but never any red flags. Then it came back to me. Sometimes he would call me Dimples. I shivered. Good morning, Dimples. I was shocked that he had literally been right under my nose for weeks. 
I had been totally alone with him on many occasions, and I never suspected anything. I don't know for certain that he was the one leaving the notes, but they stopped after he was arrested. Anyway, stay safe out there guys and gals.